Hey, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Christina Kentz, an artist based out of San Francisco. And today I wanna to show you my process for doing an underpainting for a portrait. I usually like to do an underpainting where I lay out the values of my painting. So everything is just monochromatic. It's just one color. Um, just showing where the light and darks of my paintings are gonna be before I go into doing the full color painting. I find it helps me work out a lot of the drawing and proportion issues, so it's a lot easier when I go into color. Also, I wanted to add, if you're new to portrait painting but you wanna learn or you wanna improve your portrait painting, I'm gonna be part of a year-long course teaching portrait painting through the Kara Bullock Art School. It's an awesome course where you get a new portrait painting lesson each week of the year. You can check out the course at the link in my description. And as a quick note, this video isn't sponsored by anyone, but if you'd like to help me out, you can purchase my paintings at my website below, or you can join my Patreon, or you can also comment and like this video. All of these things really help. All right, let's get to it. So this is how I start a lot of my paintings. It's with a kind of dark, neutral, brown drawing directly onto the canvas and I thin my paints out either with Galka gel or with a little bit of solvent and then I use that to lightly start sketching onto the canvas and you can see I'm using a pretty small brush I'm using a flat here and I just put a little bit of the thin paint onto my brush and then I start sketching out the overall shape that I'm seeing of the figure. So here I'm painting my partner, Barad, and I'm painting his face and also his upper torso, so kind of, yeah, like his bust. So, um, so I start by sketching the overall outline of that and placing that on the canvas because that's kind of the major shape that I'm working with with this painting. It's it's of him and then it, there's a plain background. So the largest and most prominent shape that I'm seeing is kind of his silhouette. Um, once I've sketched out the general shape of his silhouette and I kind of feel like that shape is correct, then I can move on to filling in the next dark shapes that I'm seeing within that silhouette. So in my drawing process, I like to go from big shapes to small shapes. I start with the overall silhouette and then I start to get into the next larger or the, the next largest obvious shapes that I'm seeing. So here it's the, I guess the lapel of his jacket and also his beard and his hair because he has dark hair. So those are some um, large dark shapes that I'm seeing and his lapel is casting a bit of a shadow. So that's, that's also creating some strong marks. Um, but here you can see it's important that we get the first overall silhouette right before we start to fill in these other shapes. And so while I'm drawing, I'm squinting a lot, I'm looking a lot at my reference, I'm trying to figure out whether or not I have proportions right. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, I do want to keep this as a pretty rough drawing because I can make changes during the painting process, but it is helpful to try to get these things right early on in the painting process so that we don't have to do too many corrections later on. So once I've put in his lapel, I've put in where his hair is generally, then I start adding in the features like his eyes, his eyebrow, his nose, his jawline. And I'm trying to, while I'm drawing, I'm not giving every line equal weight. So you can see some of the lines I'm using are pretty sharp, like the line for his shoulders and for his lapel, while other lines that I'm using are much softer. So I, I start to kind of get into some shading and modeling when it comes to his cheek and around his features because there we're not getting this sharp distinction between where one form ends and the other begins, but we're going to be, or in my painting, which is going to be a, a somewhat realistic portrait, um, I'm going to be having soft changes in the form rather than sharp, strong shadows in those areas. So I'm keeping that in mind with my drawing and starting to suggest where um, some of those shadows are occurring so that once I do go in and add color, um, I already kind of have an idea of how I want to do the shading and how I want to model the form. And as you can see, I'm starting with the larger shapes and then I'm going to the smaller ones. And I'm trying to get those larger shapes right so that then it's easier to position the smaller ones inside those larger shapes. And here, I'm not really using 
rules of thumb. I'm not thinking exactly about, well, the eyes should be um, this distance from the top of the head and the chin or things like that. I'm, I'm really just going off the image. That being said, I do have a lot of experience drawing portraits and I have many years ago studied things like anatomy. So part of this, it could be partially just, you know, my intuition and that those lessons that I learned could have stuck with me to today. So not to say that you shouldn't study that stuff, but I do think that if you are just going off of observation um, and just p trying to paint accurately what you see in front of you, um, then, you know, if you're thinking about things more in terms of shapes rather than in terms of these theories and concepts, then I think you can arrive at a really realistic painting. Um, and so, so yeah, so I'm going from these larger shapes to smaller shapes. And as you can see, I, I've refined a lot of the details. So towards the end, I add in the glasses. Um, I, I sort of try to get the features on his face right. And then I go in and I shade certain areas to get a little bit of sense of the contrast because he was wearing a slightly darker brown jacket, but he has this bright white shirt on. And then there's also the highlights on his face. So here I'm kind of just adding in where those value differences are so that when I go to make the final painting and when I go to add color, um, I already kind of have a sense of how the overall design of the painting is working because I think values are a really strong way to get a sense of the design of the painting. But then after um, after kind of filling in the values, I've sort of lost some of the hard edges that I wanted to keep for the painting. And so I go back in with a little bit more paint on my brush and I refine those edges a bit to bring out some of those stronger shadows and remind myself where I really want those dark darks to be and and kind of get a sense of where the drama is in the painting because um, I do want to have some some sharp dark shapes and so I'm kind of marking out where those are and I think here it's it also allows me to see like okay do I have a variety in my shadows? Do I have a nice variety in my values where there are some soft dark shapes but there are also sharp dark shapes that overall kind of create an interesting image? And I'm thinking about even things like line weight here. Even if the final painting doesn't have line in it, I'm kind of varying how thick the line is that I'm painting with my brush um, just to kind of give more of a sense of movement and life to the portrait. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with um, the drawing. It has all of the basics that I need to get started for painting. So um, here I can leave the drawing as it is. I'll let it dry for a day or two, and then it'll be ready for me to start adding paint the next day. So here we have the final version of the underpainting. As you can see, it's still pretty simplified, but it has all the information that we need to start adding color. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really liked this video. And now I want to hear from you. Do you do underpaintings before your painting or do you go straight to color? Let me know. And as a reminder, I'm teaching a portrait painting course with the Carol Bullock Art School. So if you're interested in improving your own portrait painting skills, check out the link in my description and be sure to sign up. I hope to see you there. And as always, a big, big thank you to all of my amazing supporters on Patreon. If you like my art, if you like my videos and you want to help me make more, check out my Patreon at the link. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.